as I was saying, that's what the world wants. You know, when you start reading towards the last few books of the Bible, James, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude, all those are talking about the last days. See, Paul's teaching you how to walk in the spirit. And the apostles teaching you to be careful. If you see the difference in their teachings, that's the major difference. Walking in the spirit and the apostles warning you that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Things to watch out for. But they work together. You got to know how to walk in the spirit. And you got to know why you need to walk in the spirit. Because the devil is out there. And his people are out there. And guess what? A lot of people work for him. And a lot of people work for God. And you got to use your discernment. The thing is, you try to pull them out of the hands of the devil. The same way God pulls you out of the hands of the devil. What are you going to do? Take the blindfold off. Take the veil off. You understand? I'm not saying God doesn't want you to have joy here. Yes. He said, I'm, let me come to me so I can give you peace, an inner peace that the world can't give you. Your peace is not going to come from the world. The joy is not going to come from the world and materialism. It's going to come from inside. No matter what you're going through, it's going to come from inside. The love of God is going to be in you. You're not going to need a PlayStation 5 to make you feel better. It might make your joy a little better, but you got to be joyful already. I tell people all the time when you drink, if you're drinking or something, if you're sad when you start drinking, you're going to stay sad. Right? If you're depressed, before you start drinking, you're going to stay depressed. The alcohol only uplifts or multiplies how you are. You understand? You see, that's where addiction comes from. You're not satisfied spiritually. So you keep chasing after this. You keep chasing after that. When you're not seeking that heavenly joy, that inner peace that God gives you. Let's say you're happy, right? You're happy. You're already happy. And you drink your glass of wine. It's going to make you happier. You do know that, right? It's going to make you happier. It's going to make you happier. That's what the, the God, God is trying to give you joy already. Let's go back to the prodigal son. The son came home to a feast. He was out there partying and everything. Came back to another party. That should tell you something. That God wants you to enjoy yourselves with, with him as the head. And he's going to teach you how to have your joy more abundantly. Not as the world sees joy. He's going to give you an inner peace. It's going to be something so different from what that means. No matter what you're going through, you're still going to be happy. You understand? If you're not happy, I'm going to tell you something. We can't make you happy. Alcohol can't make you happy. Sex can't make you happy. None of those things can make you happy if you can't get happy from the joy and the love of God. These things in the world you can't keep that happiness going. And the world knows that. That's why they keep making new phones and new games and new this and new that. They keep you thinking, okay, if I only had the next best thing, well, the best thing you can get is Jesus. And your joy going to be full always. I know God has no problem with you having a few drinks here and there. He don't. But just remember, he said, in all things, every time you eat, when he gave the Lord's Supper, he said, do this in honor of me. So keep God on your mind. He said, it's not what goes in a man that defiles a man and what comes out of a man. If you got evil thoughts and evil things that's going on in your life, think about this. Why, when you was living for the world, when you went to the club, you wanted to drink a lot first? Because so it can bring that other side of you out. <laughs> That boldness in you. <laughs> oh, I can talk to more women. I can talk to more men. Now I dance now. But the thing is, you're going to get to a point where you are already happy. Like I said, if you're an angry person, alcohol is going to bring out anger. If you're an angry person, weed is going to bring out anger. That drug or whatever you choose is going to bring out what you already are. You're already there. That's how he broke it down to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What's in your heart is already there. So God has to fix your heart. He has to fix the inner turn, inside. Because your heart and your insides 
or evil, this is exactly what's going to come out. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. He said there's nothing that's done in the dark that won't manifest itself in the light. If your heart is dark, it's going to come out. The people are going to know it. Because you can't fool God. And you can't fool the Holy Spirit. You understand? For real. I'm coming with you with knowledge that I wish when I was growing up that the church leaders and my aunts and aunties that went to church on a regular would tell me that I know now. You understand? That I know now. Don't you... That's why you, when you get the word now, that's why you need to tell your kids the truth. It ain't about Santa Claus. It ain't about the Easter Bunny. It ain't about Mardi Gras. You know how many people are so not joyful right now because Mardi Gras ain't here. They upset. Man, that was my one time to have fun. To be joyful. They took Mardi Gras away. Oh, you foolish people. If you were depending on Mardi Gras to bring you joy, you're missing them all. If you're depending on Christmas to have a joyful time, you're missing them all. If you're depending on your birthday to have a joyful time, you're missing them all. If you was waiting on 4th of July to have a good time, you're missing them all. If you're waiting on the Super Bowl Sunday, you're missing them all. If you're waiting on the NCAA championship game, you're missing them all. If you're waiting on what's going on TV to give you joy, you're missing them all. Because you're, you're expecting your joy to come from the world. You need to inner joy. It don't matter what's going on around you. No matter if they shut down the NBA. No matter if they shut down Mardi Gras. You got a peace and a joy in you that the world can't take from you. You understand? Wow. Hope you're receiving this. I do, I do this because I love everybody. I love people. I'm not saying I don't get angry. Yeah, I do. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I'd be lying if I said I didn't say things that I shouldn't say sometimes out of anger. I'd be lying to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I get upset too. I mainly get upset because the devil stay on me. <laughs> stay on me. He's trying to discourage me. And he use anybody. He use anybody to discourage me. And it, it, it upsets me that we got somebody that hate us so much that tries to steal our joy. And he'll use anybody to steal it, anything to steal it. That's why every morning I put my cross on first. Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me this word to spread. Lord Jesus, I feel such every soul at the sound of my voice, Lord Jesus. I know you have a plan for us. I know you have a place prepared for us that's better than this earth could ever give us. And the promises and the deceitfulness that the devil offer won't last. Lord Jesus, we know you got an everlasting love. The love that's going to give us eternal life. Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch anybody's heart who haven't accepted you as their Lord and Savior in their life, Lord Jesus. I ask you to come into them today. I ask you to continue to work on me. Continue to work on my wife, our kids, Lord Jesus. All those who we come in contact. Use, with, use us wherever we go. Don't let the world and the devil confuse us from what our purpose is. Allow us to keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Y'all have a blessed day.